Hey everyone, thanks for checking out our TV show. Uh, this is the Pilgrim People, and we hope you enjoy our rendition of the story of the first colony of Jamestown. So this right here is just a summary of the first season. It's just all the management concepts we use throughout all the episodes. So of course you got episode 1 with decision making, episode 2 organizational structure, episode 3 was all about planning, 4 was about ethics, 5 about communication, 6 was about motivation, and then 7 was all the reflections. Now this right here is the story about John Smith and the Pilgrim's journey to Jamestown to attempt to build the first permanent settlement in the Americas. Along the way, they run into Chief Powhatan, who demands John Smith and the Pilgrims to listen to his orders. Do the Jamestown settlers and Powhatan Indians come to mutual terms, or do things turn south? A harsh winter is on the way, and multiple managerial skills will be needed for survival. John Smith directs several survival efforts and aids the settlers. Communication skills are put to the test when Pocahontas begins to slack off on her responsibilities. Does the colony make it, or do they lack the managerial skills needed for survival? The plot of our story is to tell the story of John Smith, Powhatan, John Rolfe, and Pocahontas while demonstrating key management concepts along the way. We previously detailed all the management concepts we'd be using throughout the season, and this right here is the story that's meant to be fun for the audience, but it's also meant to teach them the importance of proper management. So our target audience for this show could vary from anyone from 18 to 65. Obviously, it tailors more towards the business students of the University of South Florida. That way they can just get a little bit better knowledge of the management concepts. But it also can target just, you know, regular people who want to fine-tune those management skills. The format of this TV show consists of seven episodes, which demonstrate a variety of management skills and concepts that we previously learned in the book. Each episode consists of a conflict, which our main character has to use those skills and concepts to be able to solve the problem that's at hand. So this right here is John Smith. He's the young leader of the Virginia colonists. He has all the decision-making power when it comes to Jamestown. And he also has a ton of survival skills to be able to help the colony survive. He's a great negotiator, and that's what helps him to be able to talk to the Powhatan Indians into not destroying them. The Powhatan chief is the wise, peaceful leader of the Powhatan Native American tribe. He's the father of Pocahontas, and he makes all the decisions for the tribe. Next up is John Rolfe. He's the most successful farmer of the Jamestown colony and possibly the most successful farmer in all of history. He's the first person to ever successfully grow tobacco in the Americas. He also marries Pocahontas and has great interpersonal skills. He loves to play devil's advocate between John and the Powhatan chief. That way he feels like he has a little bit more power to make decisions. Last but not least is the famous Pocahontas. She's the daughter of the Powhatan chief and also the wife of John Rolfe. She's super smart and uses the brain that she got from her father to also help strategically plan with the colonists. During our pilot episode, all of the characters are introduced, including their occupations, strengths, and weaknesses. This episode will take place with John Smith and all the pilgrims landing in Jamestown as they attempt to build the very first settlement in the Americas. As the colony leader, John obviously has a ton of responsibilities. He's got to keep the resources flowing for the colony, so they don't freeze in the upcoming winter, of course. He's got to ration out all the food, as also learning how to farm in this new terrain. John knows that to survive, they've obviously got to build walls, produce food, and prepare for the winter. To accomplish all this stuff, he's got to work and contribute his decision-making skills for the sake of the colony. During our second episode, John Smith and John Rolfe's new arrival in Jamestown is strenuous due to scarce amounts of food and shelter. As John Smith was hunting nearby, he encountered a woman gathering berries. The woman seemed frightened as if she had never seen an outsider before. She ran off before John Smith had a chance to call out to her. The next day, men approached the campgrounds. It was Chief Powhatan, and he told John Smith that he would have to listen to him and his orders. He assigned the pilgrims into an organizational structure that gave John Smith an organizational chart to follow. As time passed, the Indians and pilgrims began to integrate and cooperate as one. 
Chief Powhatan recognized John Smith's great leadership and management traits. Chief Powhatan asked John Smith to lead the colony with them, that way they can create a better village with a flourished society. John Smith agrees and establishes mutual rules, goals, and values that the colonies integrate into their daily activities. During the summer harvest, John and the pilgrims receive bad news from a Powhatan elder that the winter is going to be a very cold one. He then tells John that he should prepare himself and his crew. It is up to John to put his managerial skills into practice as he devises a tactical plan to reach his objective. John then gathers up the pilgrims and the Powhatan tribe to collect resources that they use for sustainable living for the harsh winter. John comes up with a plan to split the work evenly between the pilgrims and the tribe, and together they come up with enough resources, but along the way they do run into some trouble. John's productive plan and strategic thinking was not well equipped to combat disease, environmental conditions, and also the scarcity of goods. To combat this, John comes up with a preservation system that enables the food his people have collected to persevere throughout the year. With this well thought of plan, John was able to adapt to the environment around him and solve the obstacles through innovation. Shortly after the harsh winter predicted by the Powhatan elder ends, John Smith receives a letter from the King of England. The letter asks of John to drive out the Powhatan tribe out of the land they are all living on. The King orders John to do that because he believes that the tribe is simply using up their resources and they no longer need them there. This presents an ethical dilemma for John Smith and his crew because the tribe was crucial to the pilgrim's survival out in the New World. John puts his managerial ethics into practice and tries to devise a solution to this problem that will also avoid an ethical lapse. John Smith puts his planning and organizational skills into practice and decides to relocate the tribe to an alternate section of the grounds that they inhabit. He mentions that food production will be a community effort in which both parties help each other. This benefits the pilgrims because it allows them to maintain their identity and a safe distance while still maintaining good relations with the Powhatan and vice versa. The king hears of John's decision and is not upset but proud that he was able to solve the ethical dilemma and was also simultaneously able to avoid an ethical lapse. John Smith has taken control of responsibilities toward managing daily activities. Due to his higher organizational level of the colony, he directs downward communication to John Rolfe and Pocahontas. This form of communication allows John Smith to send directions, objectives, and decisions to them so they can follow and accomplish their responsibilities. Pocahontas is tired of following John Smith's directions and starts slacking off on her responsibilities. At first, John Smith storms over Pocahontas and yells at her for not completing her work like the rest of the people. This only made the situation worse. Pocahontas was now angered because of John Smith's actions and actually did less work than before. This was hurting the entire colony as a whole, and John Smith knew he had to fix his mistake. He had to improve his communication skills in order to get Pocahontas back on track. He met Pocahontas after work and listened to their opinions and stayed open-minded the whole entire conversation. He conveyed empathy as he listened and observed nonverbal cues this gave Pocahontas the feeling of importance and helped her to understand that her work affects everyone, not just herself. Through this experience, John Smith improved his managerial skills while developing a key relationship with one of his key workers to help the colony for the better. As the weeks passed and the settlers grew accustomed to their new lives, John Smith starts to see a decline in the effort of the group. Now that winter is over, the first heat wave of spring is draining everyone of their energy. John realizes that if he doesn't react fast, then many of their goals won't be hit on time. John realizes that the best course of action in this situation is to use positive reinforcement to try to motivate the group. So John, being the manly man he is, stepped up on his horse and rode through the town announcing the big meeting in an hour. As everyone, including Pocahontas and the Powhatans, piled into the town square, John began to motivate the group. After giving an impromptu five-minute speech about pushing through adversity, John decided to reveal the new incentive program. Whomever the top five hardest workers were in the group, they would get double the beer rations. 
once John announced this, everyone got back to work and worked double time. Because of John's motivational skill set, he was able to see production increase throughout the colony. Because of the leadership in Jamestown, it flourished as the first successful colony in our new world. Throughout this project, each team member has evenly contributed, and we plan to continue like that all the way till the end.